All right, Romans chapter number 3. Romans chapter 3. We're going to move all the way ahead to verse 27. How about that? All right, tonight, let, let's ask tonight, have you been justified freely by His grace? Good. Have you been, uh, have you received the redemption that is in Christ Jesus? Have you received the propitiation God set forth for you? Have you been washed in His blood? Are you a recipient of His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past? All right. Is He, is he the just justifier of you because you believed in Jesus? Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? <laughs> it doesn't have to be a law that says, Thou shalt not boast of works, nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. If God, if God has done all of this for us, and we've done nothing to earn it, deserve it, really uh, little, if anything, in return for it, how could we ever boast? Seems impossible. How could we ever be offended or feel slighted if we're not uh, boasted of? Truly, the Lord is deserving of all the glory and, and all the praise. Father, bless your word tonight as we read these verses together. Pray that you'd read us. And, and Father, help us to see the right, the right attitude that we should have toward your Son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Boasting is excluded. There's no ground left upon which pride may stand. The means of salvation was devised by God. The way of salvation was made by God. The gift of salvation was given by God. The benefits of salvation are bestowed by God. Then he gets all the praise. Since salvation is granted by grace through faith apart from works, there's nothing for the saved sinner to do but give glory to the Lord. It is impossible to read and agree to the truth stated about the sinner in Romans 1 through 3 and give glory to yourself. It's impossible to read and agree with what the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost have done for the guilty sinner in Romans 3, 21 to 26 and not give glory to God. To brag or vaunt ourselves is impossible if we comprehend God's just nature. To speak of our own worth or actions cannot be done when we look upon the Redeemer and consider the price He's paid for our redemption. To speak of our glory or to take pride in our own persons is laughable when we look with wonder at the propitiation made, the blood of Jesus Christ shed upon that cross. To exalt self after so thorough an examination of every sinner would be great folly. To magnify anyone other than the God of all grace, truth, love, and righteousness would border on atheism. How can I believe in the God of the Bible and brag on me? It, it, that, that would really show a misunderstanding of both God and self. To magnify anyone other than the God of all grace, as he is revealed in this passage of Scripture, just make you step back and say, I wonder, I wonder how I could think so highly of myself. I wonder how I could expect others to think so highly of me. Is no one on the scene thinking about Jesus Christ? Is no one on the scene considering God? Let's look at this thing in a Bible way. Psalm 115. Psalm 115. Lots of verses tonight. Psalm 115. Bible, 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 Bible. Amen. Psalm 115. Verse number one, here's a great follow-up to Romans 1 through 3. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, 
Put unto thy name give glory for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. Deflect it. When it rises up in your heart, say, no, no, not me, no, the Lord. When there's a temptation to feel that others are not giving you the honor and the reputation and the respect that you imagine you deserve, deflect immediately, no, no, not unto me, to the Lord. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. Matthew chapter number 6. Matthew the 6th chapter. This model prayer given to the disciples who ask the Lord to show them how to pray. Verse number 9 after this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I'm not sufficient to feed myself for a single day. That's verse 12. <laughs> look, look who God is. He's, he's the hallowed name in heaven. He's the king over the kingdom. He's the, uh, the Lord of all, and who am I? Verse 11, please don't let me go hungry today. Anybody there you see should get some glory and some honor. I don't think it'd be a man begging bread. I think it'd be the Lord that made all things. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. There's my sin. Lead us not into temptation. There's me when I'm not sinning. <laughs> but deliver us from evil. So what's the conclusion? For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Jesus didn't say repeat these words, but he said here's a good way to pray. Start with how great God is. In the middle, remind yourself how pitiful you are. And then finish up with how great God is. That'd be pretty good. That, you don't have to say those words, but whatever you got to pray about when you get up tomorrow, that'd be a good approach to it. God's great. I'm not. God's great. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Revelation 4. Let's see how this thing ends up when we all get to heaven and sing and shout to victory. Revelation chapter 4. I can understand our minds would be clouded down here. I can understand our our thinking could, could be off center a little bit down here. I can understand how we, we're so prone to, uh, to wander and stray in our attitudes as well as in our actions. When we get to heaven, we'll, it'll all be worked out. And the Bible says in verse 10, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Chapter 5, verse 11. And I beheld the voice, I heard, I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing in every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and upon the Lamb forever and ever. What you don't have are, are several different groups in heaven. One saying, what about my honor? I'm a soul winner. What about my honor? I was a soloist. What about my honor? I pastored. What about my honor? I was a missionary. What about my honor? I was me. In fact, I was the best me I could be. And every day was a Friday. None of that. There wasn't a group over here saying, but we kept the law. We didn't need that lamb. There was another group over, over here saying, we got in on our works. No, no. 
He may not get it here, but up there, he gets all the glory. He, he may have to share it down here where people are still competing with one another for, for uh, pats on the back and praise and out of boys, but up there, up there, it all goes to him. It all goes to him. We'll get our, sorted, our, our, our thinking sorted out in a moment in a twink of an eye. If you're saved, that trumpet sounds. There'll be more change than your body. Your attitude will be changed. And, and you'll get a new attitude, and your new attitude will be, let me get to that throne and fall at his feet, and if I got a crown, let me throw it at those feet, and let me make sure he knows that I recognize he's worthy of all the honor and all the glory and all the praise. I got nothing to brag about. He got me here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look at Psalm number 7. No, no, Revelation 7 while we're here. Revelation 7. And let's start at verse number 9. Revelation 7, verse 9, After this I beheld no great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations. I, I, I hate to lose the train of thought, but I, it's, it's so easy for me to, to jump the tracks, and, and sometimes I get back on the tracks, and sometimes I don't. But, you know, in, in Revelation, God, God told you the exact number of trumpet judgments, the exact number of vile judgments, exact number of days of the Great Tribulation, months of the Great Tribulation, years of the Great Tribulation. He gave you the exact measurements of the holy city of the New Jerusalem. He told you exactly how many gates there were. I mean, it's, it's precise numbers. When the Holy Spirit tells you how many saved people are on the throne, he doesn't have a number for it. Because Calvinism's wrong. If God predetermined before the foundation of the world who would be saved and who would be lost and nobody has a say in the matter, he'd give you the exact number of saints around the throne. But it's not determined. The Holy Spirit says, uh, uh, the Father said to, to the Holy Spirit, uh, tell John to write down there's a whole bunch of people there. That's what he said. A, number, a great multitude which no man could number. Well, couldn't God number it? He, he numbered the hairs of your head. He doesn't have the number. Because you're going to decide whether or not you trust Christ as your Savior. All right, that'll, that'll stir somebody up. That's all right. Glad you're listening. Of all nations, not just yours, and kindreds, not just your family, and people, not just folks that look like you, and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Now, let me ask you something. We're going to jump the tracks over here. How would they be, how would they be of all nations, all kindreds, all people, all tongues, if every one of them's a man 33 and a half years that looks just like Jesus? How would you know they're all different kindreds and tongues and tribes and nations? You know who I'm going to be in heaven? I'm going to be me. You know who you're going to be? You. Oh, well, why would anybody think different? Well, a lot of times people read books and not the Bible. And when you show them something in the Bible, they stick with the book. That's not a good idea. Verse number 10. And cried with a loud voice, saying, uh, salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and under the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Guess who gets all the praise? The one on the throne. Guess who gets all the glory? The one on the throne. Now, just because two of you, two of you are still over here where we went off the rails and off the tracks. I, somebody, somebody said, this, I was going up preaching that meeting up there in, in Milton, Florida, and, and a man up there and his wife said, uh, said, don't you think in heaven we'll look just like Jesus? No, I don't, think, I don't think you'll look just like Jesus. I don't think your wife will look just like Jesus. And, and the man said, well, the Bible says when we see him, we should be like him, for we should see him as he is. I said, it didn't say when we see him, we'll look like him. It said, we seem we'll be like him. And a man said, well, you're wrong. Wait, we're going to all look just like Jesus. I said, so you're telling me when I see you on the other side of the rapture, you're going to have wounds in your hands? That was the end of the discussion. They didn't say anything else. 
You're going to look just like Jesus. That's what he looks like. I don't think I'm going to have wounds in my hands. I didn't die on any cross for anybody. If you don't like women, don't like them down here, but don't try to keep them all out of heaven just because just you've got problems with the ladies. All right, Psalm, Psalm number 7. Psalm number 7. Oh, what, what that's, what is he, what's he talking about? Don't worry about it. You don't know what I'm talking about? Just say, well, I'm glad I don't know what he's talking about. Half the time I don't know what he's talking about. So. <laughs> Nothing new about that one. All right, Psalm, Psalm number 17. Uh, I'm sorry, seven, seven, Psalm 7, verse 17. Psalm 7, verse number 17. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness, and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. How's that? Psalm 107. Psalm 107, verse number 8. I'm back on track. Some of y'all need to get back on track. Still chasing that thing down the road. Psalm 107, verse 8. All oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. When's the last time? I, I don't want you to raise your hand. I want you to give me a verbal answer. When's the last time you praised the Lord for his goodness? We ought to do it. We shouldn't just pick up a songbook and, and, and sing through the words. And Come on, think about it. Let that be praise to the Lord. Not vain exercise. Praise the Lord there. Look at verse 32. Um, uh, let them also uh, exalt him also in the congregation of the people. Amen. Amen. Look at Psalm number 150. Psalm 150. All through this great book, Psalm 150, verse number 6. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Well, that doesn't leave anybody to praise anybody else. <laughs> if everything has breath, praise the Lord. Nobody else getting any praise. Let everything have breath, praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Psalm 34. Psalm number 34. Verse number 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Who should be magnified? Not the minister, not the youth pastor. Who should be magnified? The Lord. Who should be magnified? Not the musicians, not the singers. The Lord. Who should be magnified? Not the givers, not the door knockers, not the street preachers, not the soul winners. Who should be magnified? The Lord. The Lord. Do it for the Lord. Serve the Lord. Give the Lord the praise. Psalm number 99. Psalm 99 and verse 5. Psalm 99, 5. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool, for he is holy. You know how you worship the Lord's footstool? You get low. You get low. Didn't say worship at his shoulders, worship at his footstool. Humble yourself, get low, exalt him, make him bigger, make him bigger. At that verse, we, we just magnify the Lord. I can't make the Lord any larger. If you take out a magnifying glass and look at the words on the page, the words on the page don't get any bigger. They just look bigger to you. You can't get bigger to God, but you can look at him in such a way as he looks bigger to you. You ought to magnify the Lord. You can't make God any higher than what he is, but you can put yourself down a few notches and make the Lord appear higher. That's how you, how do I exalt the one that's on the throne of glory above everything? Well, I, I, I get myself down off his level. I exalt him by getting lower. Mm -hmm. Psalm 118. Psalm 118. Psalm 118 and verse 28. Psalm 118, verse 28. Thou art my God. 
I will praise thee. Thou art my God. I will exalt thee. It's a conscious effort. It's a determination. It's something these, these men purposed in their heart to do. I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm going to honor the Lord. I'm going to magnify the Lord. I'm going to exalt the Lord. Amen. If there was nothing bad, no, you know, no, no dirty stuff, no cussing stuff, no, no sin stuff, if there, there was nothing bad coming out of Hollywood. The fact that it exalts man and doesn't exalt God is a problem. Is a problem. I, 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 I would guess that most of you here are probably of one per political persuasion and not the other. Um, I, I, I gather that from your conversations and, and, and so forth. But honestly, honestly, you could watch CNN and listen to the Democrats 24 hours a day, and you can watch Fox and listen to the Republicans uh, 24 hours a day, and, and the, and the so-called conservatives, who are more liberal than conservatives were, uh, are more liberal than liberals were 20 years ago. You can listen to that all day long, and you just hear men trying to convince you which group of men to exalt. And humans trying to convince you which group of humans is worthy of praise, I think God deserves the praise. I think Jesus Christ deserves the glory. Uh, the rest of it's just noise trying to, trying to distract me. Trying to get my eyes off that throne and say, well, look over here, what about this guy? He dunked the ball. Look over here, look at this woman. She, she posed in less clothes than the other woman posed in. And you've got to admit, we, we've gone from exalting and praising as a society. Um, a, a, astronauts and people that defeated Nazis and communists to exalting reprobates who can pose naked with a cell phone. <laughs> what, what a sewer this country is. What a, what a cesspool of filth that internet is. So let's stand up in the midst of all this, whether it's in, in the public square or on the job or, or in your neighborhood or, or on the, the internet world, and let's just stand up and say, no, give God some glory. Give God some praise. Give God some honor. Give Jesus Christ some worship and adoration. Amen. Salt the Lord, not all these filthy, defiled reprobates. Amen. Good. Amen. Isaiah 25. Isaiah chapter 25. Most of those people, they got you cheering for and envying and drooling over and clapping your hands about. You wouldn't let them in your house. You sure wouldn't let them around your children unsupervised. Well, unless they're coming in your house through your children's phone or computer. Then you let them hang out with them for hours unsupervised. Why would you let those people sing to your children? Why would you let those people influence your children's attitude and your children's behavior and your children's dress and your children's thoughts about parental authority and your children's thoughts about righteousness and the Holy Bible? If they showed up at your doorstep, you wouldn't let them in. But if they show up on an electronic device, it's, well, just, just uh, don't, don't be too long on there now because you've you got to get up for school tomorrow. Bad thinking. Bad, bad thinking. Amen. Romans chapter number 5, or 15. Romans 15. Let's go there. Romans 15. You always got to go and say that kind of stuff. Why can't we just talk about praising the Lord? <laughs> Romans 15. Because it's my job description. Did we not read Isaiah? Y'all got me off the rails again there. <laughs> Isaiah 25. Isaiah 20. What was in Isaiah? Isaiah 25, verse number 1. It says, thou shalt listen to your preacher when he gets railing like that. 
25.1, O Lord, thou art my God, I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. Is he your God? That's good reason to exalt him. Has he done wonderful things? That's good reason to, to praise him. Praise the Lord. Let's exalt and praise God. I'm glad we went back to that verse. That's a good, good verse. All right. Romans 15, verse 11. Romans 15. Let's start at verse number 9. That the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy as it is written for this cause. I will confess thee among the Gentiles and sing unto thy name. And again he saith, Rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. And again, praise the Lord. All ye Gentiles and laud him. All ye people. Get as excited about God as you do a fellow winning a car race or a woman winning a beauty contest. Amen. They got their gods. They're excited about their gods. They praise their gods. Let's get excited about our God and praise our God. Romans 16. Romans 16, verse 27. To God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Now I've got a whole other lesson here that we could do separately, but I'm not going to because we're, we're in such a positive role here and these latter verses are Romans 3 and you march through such a uh, wilderness of, oh no, in Romans 1, Romans 2, Romans 3, that I just, I want you to stay so encouraged and excited like you are. Not everybody can take all that grounding and pounding like, like I can. It's good for me. I, I, I need it. I need to be put in my place most every day, but the uh, rest, rest of you don't because you're, you're just spiritual giants and, and uh, you, don't, you don't need any preaching about your sin. But here, here's the things I found in the Bible that men boast about. Where is boasting? It's excluded. If you've trusted Christ and you've exalted and magnified the Lord. But if you haven't trusted Christ, you haven't exalted, you haven't magnified the Lord, you're going to brag on yourself. And here's the things the Bible say that men, men boast about. Men will boast of their military might. 1 Kings 20, verse 11. But... Nobody fought and won a greater battle than Christ at Calvary. So I thank the Lord for our, our military. Every time they've been allowed to fight for the right reason and protect our liberties and freedoms, I'm thankful for it. Those are the qualifiers. Men will boast of their accomplishments. 2 Chronicles 25, 19. But these are nothing compared to what Jesus accomplished by his death. Men will boast of their riches. Psalm 49, 6. But only Jesus was wealthy enough to purchase our redemption. Men will boast of their iniquity. Psalm 94, 4. But only the Lord could conquer sin. Let's give him the praise. Men will boast of their idols, Psalm 97, 7. But there's only one God of love and mercy and Jesus Christ who's the express image of God. Men will boast of tomorrow. Proverbs 27, 1. They had to be warned, boast not thyself of the morrow. But only one can declare, I am that I am. There's nobody here that can say, I'll be this healthy tomorrow. I'll be this strong tomorrow. I'll be this wealthy tomorrow. You, you have no idea where you'll be tomorrow. But God can say, I am that I am. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. You say, well, God, how can you say that? You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. It doesn't matter what's going to happen tomorrow. I am. I'll be the same. Men boast in their birth privileges, Romans 2.17. But only the Savior can impart a new birth. Men boast of their superior religion, Romans eleven eighteen. But only the Lord Jesus Christ can save souls. Men boast in their giving, 2 Corinthians 9, 2. 
but only Jesus gave himself a ransom for all. Men boast of their authority, 2 Corinthians 10, 8, but only Jehovah rules from heaven. Men boast of the things they have done for God, 2 Corinthians 10, 16, but none of this has merit when weighed against what God has done for man. Men boast in their superiority over other men, Ezekiel 35, 13, but before the risen lamb, every knee shall bow. Men boast of their cunning, Proverbs 20, 14. But the Lord outdueled sin, death, hell, and the grave. Men boast of their gifts, Proverbs 25, 14. But nothing compares to the gift of God, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Men boast of great things, James chapter 3, verse 5. But great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And men boast of their followings. But the saints of all the ages follow Jesus and will praise him forever. Praise God. Turn to Psalm number 34. Turn with me to Psalm number 34. That's a lot of bragging men do. That's a lot of bragging. Psalm 34, and with that, Isaiah chapter number 2. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Isaiah 2. Psalm, Psalm 34 and Isaiah 2. Having trouble with Isaiah tonight. Psalm 34, and Isaiah chapter number 2. Let's compare these verses side by side. As soon as I find Isaiah. There it is. I knew it was in there because I found it and forgot it once before. I can't turn it. I can't turn the page. There we go. All right. Psalm 34 and verse number 2. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Where is boasting? In the Lord. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Huh? I'm, I'm still mad at you because you said we're, all, we're not all going to be 33-year-old men in heaven. Your soul's female. <laughs> Chew on that one, big man. My, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. <laughs> Well, what do you think that means? I just, it's not our topic for tonight. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 2, now, now compare, compare. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Boy, some of you are so tempted to run to the Hebrew right now. For <laughs> I've never done it before, but I might tonight. Isaiah chapter 2, by comparison, look at verse 22. Cease ye from man, whose breath is in his nostrils, for wherein is he to be accounted of? Do <laughs> you, you need to be saved from sin, death, hell, the grave, Satan, yourself? What man's going to do that for you? Where, wherein is he to be accounted of? You know, Jesus Christ became the head of the church back there, 33 A.D. Since that time, there's been Pope Innocent the first and the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth and the sixth and Pope John the first and second and fifth and 23rd and 24th. And, and, but it's just one Pope after another whose breath was in his nostrils and he was not to be accounted of. How many bishops, how many pastors, how many ministers, how many evangelists? Some of them might have been good guys, some of them not so, not so good. If they're breathing, they're going to end up like everybody else, gasping for one last breath and gone. Let's make our boast in the Lord. 
Let's not exalt men. Let's treat them with respect and with kindness and, and, and you know, what, whatever's scripturally do from one man to another. But you want to exalt and magnify somebody. You want to get your eyes on somebody and say, he'll never let me down. He'll never fail me. Don't make it a pastor. Don't make it yourself. Make it the Lord. Cease from man whose breath is in his nostrils. Where is he to be accounted of? Psalm 44. Psalm 44. Verse number 8. In God we boast all the day long and praise thy name forever, Selah. In God we boast all the day long and praise thy name forever, Selah. Uh, we talked this morning about faith. We live in a society of people full of faith. We live in a very religious society. We live in a society where thousands and thousands of people boldly witness for their faith. I do a lot of driving up and down the road. And I, and I see people in front of me. I see people as I go by them. I don't see many people go by me, but some, some do I go, go by me. But as I see them, what, on their car, on their car, they, they want the whole world to know they believe in a soccer team. They believe in a race car driver. They have a dog. Some heart their dog. Some love their Mother Earth. Some love their politicians. So they, they want the whole world. They, they put that thing on their car so it'll be there all day long. When the car is parked in there at work, it's testifying for them. When the car is outside the grocery store, it's testifying for them. When the car is in the driveway and they're asleep, it's testifying for them. They want to boast all day long about something. Me too. Me too. There's times, there's times I go places and I'm, I'm, I'm not permitted by the circumstances to speak up for the Lord. My hat can. I was, I was raised back in a day of certain cultural manners, they called them, and so I go indoors, I got to take the hat off, but maybe my shirt can. Maybe it's a place where I have to wear you know, a certain, a bit more formality and so I can have a piece of paper that can speak for me where I'm not supposed to speak. I want to make my boast in the Lord all day long. All day long. There are lost people. They make their boast all day long. All day long. I saw somebody the other day, they had a, a tattoo right, right across from the center of the forehead down the side of their face, and it said, no regrets, and regrets was spelled wrong. I bet they regret that. Said, no regrets. But I can agree with them. I haven't had any regrets in a long time myself. <laughs> Man, if you're, going to, if you're going to put something out there for the world to see for the rest of your life, you better spell check it. <laughs> All right, Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah chapter 9. The only way I could praise myself is if I've stopped thinking about what Jesus did. The only way I could expect you to praise me is to convince you to stop thinking about what Jesus did. The only way I could get really excited about what men are doing is if I don't compare it to what Jesus did. Where is boasting? It's not excluded man to man. It's excluded man to Christ. You compare man to Christ, he gets all the praise. He gets all the glory. Jeremiah 9 Verse 23, thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth 
and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. I hope God blesses you with wisdom. I hope God blesses you with might. I hope God blesses you with riches. I hope whatever God blesses you with, you won't take the praise to yourself. I hope you give him the glory for the life that you have, for the friends that you have, for the opportunities that you have, for the gifts that you have, for the material things that you have, for the spiritual blessings that you have. Let's give God the glory. Let's give God the praise. He deserves it all. Amen. Father, thank you for being praiseworthy. Thank you for revealing and manifesting your glory to us in the person of your Son and through your Word. Help us, Father, please, to, to overcome this society full of man worship and, and man praise and, and this covetousness that we have for the, the uh, honor and the glory that should be yours alone. Please, Father, help us to understand and to practice these things in Jesus' name, and amen.